Welcome to Air Force Arrogance, and today we'll be discussing some tips and tricks. First things first when it comes to tips and tricks for your Air Force air gun. We're going to start with the scope. And I discussed it in an earlier video about how important it is to have your gun and scope level. Let me explain why. This is your reticle. So imagine being perfectly level and you zero your scope in right here and you're shooting pellets and they're hitting dead center whether you're shooting pellets or slugs. If your scope is level and your gun is level and you're shooting, let's say, 50 yards. Now you move out to 100 yards and you realize your pellets are no longer hitting here, but they're down here. That could be because you're canted on your scope. Now if your scope was perfectly level, it would move your shot group over here. So when you call in saying, hey, I'm having problems, out range, I'm shooting a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. First thing you need to check is make sure your scope and your gun are leveled and zeroed properly. And that goes also with shooting at certain ranges. If you zero your gun at let's say 15 yards and then you move out to 100 yards and you're shooting here at 15, at 100 yards you're down here and you're like, well why isn't it centered? Well it's because you zeroed it at a very close range. You need to move it out. If you want it to be dead center at 100, side in at 100. Vice versa, if you want it center punching holes perfect at 25 yards, zero at 25. Because the further you go out, if this is 15, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, this is 50, and so on and so on. The further you get away, the more that pellet's gonna drop. And that's when you're gonna have to adjust your elevation or recenter your scope. It's stuff like that. It's little things that'll make your life a lot easier and knowing's half the battle. God. I love that cartoon. Another trick that'll help you out, or should I say tip, would be if you're shooting in the evening time, you're at that what we call golden hour, where the sun is just right above the horizon line and you're having problems seeing, this little piece of kit, it's called a sunshade. Go ahead and thread it onto the end of your scope. That's what it's for. Now, that can buy you an extra time out shooting in the evening when the sun is just coming down. Now, if the sun is at such an angle where without the sunshade, it's hitting right in the center of your scope and you're getting a flare, you put this shade on and now it's blocking and deflecting the direct sunlight into your scope. Buys you more time, makes the shooting experience a little bit better and gives you more time out on the range. A very important thing to remember when out shooting your air rifle is your ammunition. Not just getting the correct size, the correct weight, but taking care of your ammo. Let's say you're out shooting this awesome 45 and you purchased 45 ammo. This is actually a 457. There's other guns out of the market that are 451s, 456s. That ammo will not be as accurate or effective in this air rifle. So if you purchased a 451 and you shot the gun and wondering why you can't group, it can't hit anything, that means the size of your projectile is too small. You're not getting a complete seal and a complete bite on your lands and grooves, meaning your ammo is going to be inaccurate downrange and there's nothing we can do about it except purchase the right ammo. In this air rifle, we also do not recommend Sabo rounds, which is a lead projectile or a projectile of any type inside a plastic housing. It's just not recommended. They're not as accurate, not as precise. Just don't do it. Another thing that could bring up some problems if you go with the copper jacketed slug. We know there's muzzle loaders out there that have 457s, but that is for a muzzle loader. That is a combustion round. This is air. Whole different ball game. Don't use it or you'll be voiding your warranty calling us to get a slug removed from your gun and that can be costly. And it can also damage the barrel. Now it's time to discuss taking care of your ammo. Ammo comes in boxes and tins. And that's for a reason. You don't just take your ammo and throw it inside a tackle box like your weights 
and bounce it around. If you take this slug like this and drop it, now we have a flat spot. That takes it out of round, it no longer seals properly, and is no longer stable downrange. Same thing with your pellets. If you take this and you're bouncing it around inside a toolbox in the back of your pickup truck, in your cup holder, and you throw a pellet in, you're like, we're gonna go shoot and target practice. Now that skirt's bent. That skirt is horrible. It will no longer seal properly. It'll no longer travel downrange properly. It'll destabilize at range. So that one, trash. It's that simple. Take care of your ammo like you would take care of your gun. That way, you'll have a good time shooting. Here's a little piece of advice that'll help you out and make your life a lot easier when sighting in your air rifle. If you notice this bench, it is very sturdy and solid. If you're sighting your air gun in on a wobbly plastic table that shifts back and forth, that could be your problem with getting perfect groups. Not only is the table you use and your platform you're using very important on achieving ultimate accuracy and sighting in your gun, but what you use to rest your gun on. I like to use sandbags. Sandbags are an amazing thing. When you take your gun, let's just say we'll remove this, and you don't have a gun vise like that. You want to use something, you're like, oh, this doesn't work. You have a problem here. Take your sandbag, put up, now you have a steady platform. If you don't have a steady platform, you're never going to get the accuracy you desire. You're never going to get the groups you want, and that can cause you to get frustrated. And especially a lot of first-time air gun buyers can be detoured by this. Sturdy platform and a sturdy rest will make your life so much easier when it comes to sighting in your air rifle. And please remember, outside elements will affect the accuracy of your air rifle. If you have a 15 mile an hour crosswind and you're trying to zero in at 50 yards and you're wondering why your pellets are shooting a foot and a half to the left, that could be the reason. You wanna take it inside or on a non-windy day and that'll help you get to your zero. And then you can adjust from there. If you zero in on a non-windy day and everything's perfect and calm and you're holding these perfectly tight groups, you go out on a windy day, put up a target, and you're noticing you're drifting to the left, you can do your holdovers or adjust your elevation and windage to compensate for that outside wind. But when you're first getting started and you're first trying to zero your gun, do it on a calm day. Make sure you have your sturdy bench and your sturdy rest. That'll make your life a lot easier and help you enjoy the sport even more. This is important. The final tip and trick about taking care of your air guns, and it's so simple. Do not dry fire your gun. You will void your warranty. I've showed it before, and I will show it again. When you have your gun in the open position and you want to decock it, it's simple. It is so simple, and it'll save you so many problems. Breach is open. If you're out shooting, the gun is cocked. At this point, it's cocked. It's ready to rock and roll. Let's say you're hunting, or you realize you're out of air, or something happens and you need to decock your Texan. Open the charging handle. Take your hand, depress it just a little bit till you can see the carrier move. While holding your charging handle, press the safety forward, pull the trigger. That right there, you can notice the bolt didn't come closed all the way. Now, your gun is safe. So important. That is a huge safety thing to remember how to decock your gun. If you dry fire your gun, you will avoid the warranty. Remember that, no dry firing, no excuses. We know what happens when you dry fire. It slams everything back. No air pressure comes out. It just binds up the gun and it destroys it. Do not dry fire your gun. It's even in the manual. Another thing, these guns use dry lubricant. No gun oil. The only time you add any kind of oil is if you're cleaning your barrel and you have a tough spot to get out. Hops number nine, 
run it through. If you dump a bunch of gun oil inside the gun, you're gonna bind everything up. It turns that dry loop into mud and paste and it turns to concrete. The only time, other than cleaning the barrel, we'll use any kind of lubricant is a little bit of O-lube on the back of your valve every once in a while. If you notice the performance is just not right, Q-tip, toothpick, little dab of lube right there. And on the top of the barrel, right where it exposes that little half cut moon, you could put a little bit of silicone lube there. Other than that, don't mess with it. If you have a problem, pick up the phone and call us. Our customer service is awesome. Those people will help you in any way, shape, any way, shape, form possible to make your life easy, which makes our life easy. If there's an issue, pick up the phone. If you filled out your warranty card when you purchased your air rifle, we should have all your information and the gun is completely covered. So that's another reason, as soon as you open the box, fill out the warranty card, put the serial number on it, send it in. If you have any problems, do not hesitate to call. But I hope these videos have been helpful, and thank you for joining us at Air Force Air Guns.